What you guys got another video today we're taking a look at how to fix the Windows 10 update KB5034441 error which gives up an error code when you're trying to update Windows 10 and it's a known issue and I'm going to show you how to fix it using the Microsoft way and also a much easier way to fix it as well in this video. A lot of people wanted to see this video on how to actually fix it. It's to do with the uh, recovery partition being too small and if your recovery partition is not small, but it's full of data, then it won't be able to run the patch because the patch that uh, Microsoft released is quite a big patch and it needs to patch the Windows recovery partition as they explained on their website. It kicks up a error install failure uh, code and you can see the error code right there. Now they did uh, release some manual resizing options here for your partition table which was super risky for a lot of people that don't know how to use command prompt and disk part. I will show you this on how to do it and how they're explaining it right here, but I'll also show you a much safer method to be able to do this as well. So I'll show you two methods. This method is what they recommended and the method which I recommend after this part. But it's still interesting to see for those people that know how to do it. But first, before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD key sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description. Use my promo code capital B capital R09 and apply this to your order. Once you create an account, they'll send you your key code and you will then be able to activate your version of Windows that you have. Check out the video description for more details on where to purchase those. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So what we're going to do is go into search and type CMD and run this command prompt as administrator. First off, we're going to type out this command, which they recommend you do. And this will give us some information about the system. So let's go ahead and type this out and push enter. The information you're looking for is this one here, which says uh, global root device hard disk zero. We're looking for the hard disk zero. That's our hard disk right there. And you can see partition four and then recovery and then win RE. So next, what we need to do here is follow what their instructions were. And what we're going to do is we're going to disable uh, the Windows recovery. So we're just going to quickly type out the disable command here. We can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to push the up arrow key and then change the last part from info to disable because now we want to disable that particular feature in Windows. You can see operation successful. You just need to copy out those commands. Next, we're going to do disk part. This will open up the disk part uh, tool inside Windows. Let me just pull this down a bit so we can see. So from here, we're going to do a bunch of commands. And the first one we're going to do is list disk, just as you see here. And this will list all the disks on this machine. You can see we have one disk zero and that's the one we're interested in if you have multiple disks make sure you're selecting the one with the recovery partition on it and that's the one you would need to select so what we're going to do here is we need to select disk zero so we're going to do sel which is short for select and then space disk space zero and this will select that disk so now we've got the disk selected what we're going to do here is we need to list the actual partition. So let's go do list space part, which is short for partition. And there we go, it lists all the partitions on that system. So we've got four partitions. The one we're interested in is the primary one, which is number three. And because we need to shrink this partition to obviously make some space there, so we can use that space on our recovery partition. So let's quickly uh, select partition three by doing cell space part three and push enter and this will select the partition three which is our primary partition now that's done what we need to do next is we need to shrink that partition down so what we're going to do is do a big command here to do shrink space desired and then what we need to do is give that an equal so we can give it the space that we want to shrink it by so we'll do 250 megabytes that's what they recommend you can do more if you want to, but we're just going to stick with what they recommend. Then we'll do space minimum, and then we'll do equals 250. So that is going to be 250 megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes. So once that's done, push enter, and this will shrink our main uh, partition 
a main primary partition down by 250 megabytes. And you can see disk part successfully shrunk the volume by 250 megabytes. Pretty simple stuff. So next up, what we need to do is select our partition four, which is our recovery partition. So now we need to do cell space part space four and then push enter. And this is going to select the uh, partition recovery. So let's go ahead and do that by pushing enter here and it should select. Now, what you need to remember here is you're playing around with your partition tables inside command prompt. And this is why I said that this was very dangerous and you can end up breaking your PC. A lot of people are saying you're not going to break your PC. If you start deleting the wrong partition, your PC will not boot. So my title was valid in that video. So now you can see we do have partition four. Uh, selected and this is where the danger bit comes in delete partition space override now what you're telling it to do here is to delete the partition uh, four, which is your recovery partition because we're going to be creating a new one and basically what you've done here is deleted that it says successfully deleted the selected partition if you selected the wrong partition that's where the danger bit comes because you could delete your primary uh, partition by accident and now you won't have a windows operating system so disk part list space disk and you can see here we're on gpt this is the next bit you need to check because if you're on gpt you need to use a certain command and if you're on mbr well you shouldn't be on mbr on windows 10 but if you are then you'll need to uh, select an mbr uh, command and i'll quickly show you these so you can see and it's this big command here i'm going to copy and paste it from their website but it says basically create partition primary and it gives you a code and on here it's exactly what they're telling you to do so i'm just going to copy this big code and paste it into my command prompt here and i'll leave that article in the video description for you so you can do the same just push enter and it's now created that uh, primary partition here so you can see next is uh, if you have GPT, we need to do this uh, command here. Now, there is an MBR one there, and I'll show you that in a second, but we are on GPT, so I'm going to use the GPT uh, command. So let's push this in and push Enter, and you can see it successfully assigned the attributes to that selected GPT partition. Now, if you did have an MBR partition here, this is the command that you would do, create partition primary space id equals 27 we haven't got an mbr so we're not going to run that command you won't need to run that command either if you're running gpt just make sure you do that okay so now we've got that bit done we need to move on to the next step and that is to format that created partition that we just done so we're going to run their format quick and it's the fs equals ntfs space label you can see it right there and they're going to call that equals windows re tools that's what it's called because we've just created one we deleted it and now we're creating a new one which is going to be larger so that's now done and we've got that successfully formatted so that's ready to use next we can exit out of uh, disk part here and it's leaving disk part and you can now turn back on the windows recovery so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to type this uh, command out again and then do space enable this time so we can re-enable that and it's now done. Now I've seen videos on YouTube that are telling you to delete this altogether. Don't do that. It's just going to break your operating system. Don't do that at all. So next we're going to go to disk management here. And if you look in disk management, you will see that the uh, recovery partition is now expanded up to 1.1 gigabytes in size. And again, yours might vary in size to mine, but it just depends how big yours is. Just make sure you've got enough space in there. Uh, capable now to show you a quick and easy way of doing it using mini tool so mini tool is a partition program a mini tool partition wizard it's called you can use the free version first off we're going to right click on our c drive and you can see here what we're going to do is move and resize all you need to do here is use the sliders to slide along to reduce the size of our c drive uh, and this is going to give us enough space here so it'll be unallocated space that we're going to be using here so you can see it growing at the bottom here when i pull the slider across it's just taking space from the c drive and giving it 
in allocated space so we can use that on our uh, recovery partition. So I'm just going to drag this slider along to whatever value you want. It doesn't have to be 250 megabytes. It can be as big as you want. So just don't go too big, but you know, because you're wasting space. We're just going to give this a reasonable amount. Let's just drag this back a little bit here and give this roughly about there. So 1.54 gigabytes. So we're going to click OK here, and you need to apply this. And this has just created a small bit of space that we're going to use. So we're going to restart the system because that's what it wants us to do. So click on Restart Now. And this program is completely free to do this operation. So it's not going to cost any money. And this is probably the easiest method to do rather than going through which Microsoft were recommending to do all those commands in the command prompt, which something can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing. So you'll see a black screen coming up with a load of code going on it. That's the program working in the background. It's repartitioning uh, some space here for us. So don't worry about that. And uh, this does take a little bit of time. So just be patient. So let me speed this process up and we can then get back to the desktop. Once we get back to the desktop, we need to go back into the mini tool program one more time. And you can see how much quicker this is and safer and easier. So all we've done is just reduce the size of the C drive down. And now we're going to expand the size of the Windows RE tools that we created earlier with that command prompt. And we're going to expand it with the unallocated space that we've just created. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on the Windows RE tools. Yours might be called something different here. So just going to extend this now with uh, the unallocated space that we have. You'll see a little slider here down below. And all we need to do is literally drag this slider over uh, to maximum if you want to use all of that space. So we're going to use all of it and we're going to say OK here. So now you can see once we click OK, you now have a partition of 2.54 gigabytes. That means we've made this a lot larger because we've just extended it. And that's it. So now when you uh, unhide your update from Microsoft, if you followed my previous video, you need to unhide that update, restart your system and update Windows. And that Windows update should go through flawlessly and no problems at all. And let me just quickly show you the disk management here. And you can see now we've got 2.54 gigabytes in size, which is plenty enough for that Windows update to go through. You can click on Windows update here and it will go in and update your system. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do we have to do all of this stuff? Well, it's just Microsoft and it's broken and we need to use the workaround to fix it. If you use this workaround, this simple workaround here, it's not going to be a big deal. You're going to be able to update Windows and you won't have to wait for the patch to be released from Microsoft that's going to fix this problem because you've done it yourself. And that's what computers are all about is learning and also uh, sometimes doing the odd fix yourself. With that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video helps you out. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who are joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Let me know in the comments section below whether you were successful in doing yours and which method you used. I'll be happy to read your comments. Anyway, have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.